song is that? Name it now. If you don't know that song, you need to do some homework. My name is David Morgan. This is the Music Shed. Welcome, everybody. Looking forward to checking out some more Creed today. We got a seven song thingy going on here with this band. I believe I've heard this song before with, with arms wide open. I've definitely, I know this one. Higher in this one are the ones that I know. So I can't say I've never heard it before. Came out on April 18th, 2000. Very long time ago. And apparently Scott Stapp wrote it right before a show or something about his uh, his his soon-to-be uh, son. He found out he was going to be a dad and he was excited, as I was when I find out, found out that I was going to be a dad in 1997. That happened for me. Okay. Anyway, I'm going to stop being a weirdo, and uh, let's just hear the song. Don't forget to like, subscribe at the bell icon, and uh, leave comments. Don't forget to do all those things, and uh, let's go. Howie, roll it. Well, I just heard uh-huh. The news today It seems my life Is going, going to change. change Totally heard this song I close my eyes Like how could you not hear this song? You'd have to be like literally dead Begin to pray Then tears of joy Stream down my face Yeah, um, I'm going to stop there for a sec. Another very common chord progression. It sounds like an Ellen Johnson. And, and, and they go with it, and um, his voice has got a certain rasp to it which is it's a part it's a part of the character of his voice which i think is very appealing to people and it's a lower register he's got then tears of joy mm-hmm. stream down my face with arms wide open open it's open open that's why rock and roll is so cool because you can say all these words in this weird way and it's like cool to do that Open, like, hey, can I open the door for you? Like, you people would be like, what do you, what's that? What, what? With arms wide open, right? I like the strings. It's nice. It's a nice touch in there, the orchestral part of it, the strings, the the, the violins kind of thing. Um, it's a very heartwarming song, very hopeful. And it's nice to hear about a dad who's excited to have his kid. Very sweet. little doubt like am i gonna do a good job at this right and why isn't there piano in this song i'm saying like i would have torn this track up they should have called me i'm just saying i'll take her by my side we're standing on we create So, 
so they went, I like what they did there. C to G, E major, which is not in the key of C, nor is this D major. wrong they go F to C I was, I, I was wrong then they go to E then they go to D I like it bridge A minor oh Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at some point, Mark must have gotten sponsored by PRS Guitars because he switched from a Gibson to a PRS. And I'm imagining PRS did very well because of that move because when rock stars show these instruments on music videos, they sell like hotcakes. I mean, guess what happened the day after the Ed Sullivan show, the Beatles played in 64. Every kid wanted those instruments that were on stage. The sales went through the roof. Crazy. You know, Ludwig and was it Rickenbacker and whatever else they were using on that, on that, on that show. Gibson, maybe, or Fender? I don't know. I can't remember. But anyway, um, hey, you know, here's another thing to think about. These guys were still around when you could make a lot of money selling records. You can't, that doesn't happen anymore. The streaming rates are not up to par. And if you get like millions of views on a song, you're going to make like 10 bucks. That was not the case back then. The I wonder, you know, how he was kind of pointing out earlier. You asking how what would it, what would have been the trajectory of this band had they uh, not made so much money on the the record sales and radio play and all that stuff. It's an interesting thing. I mean, because maybe they were one of the they were one of the latter bands that actually made money on recording the old fashioned way, so to speak. Interesting topic, right? By the way, the major seventh, I point that out a lot when a, when a, when a melody note goes to the major seventh. That note is very evocative, very emotional. It's either dreamy or dramatic or magical somehow. But he's hitting it there. Seven, one, two. Those notes are something to point out. 
Another anthemic song, by the way. So they end on the A minor. Nice. I wonder what made them do that. They could have ended that song so many ways, but they, you know, beautiful. I, I love that song, actually. It's a beautiful kind of tribute to what pre-parenthood feels like to people who care about having kids, who actually want to have kids and, 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 and care about it and, and are thoughtful about it. Another huge anthem. These guys probably sold out so many, like 80,000 people's stadium shows. I don't even have to know that they did that. I'm sure they did that. that this band was, was so huge. And I and partly because their songs are so stadium ready, you know what I mean. So I don't know. I mean, I I I like them. I see why you guys like them. I don't necessarily understand, <clears throat> and I never understood the ill feelings that people had for for Scott Stapp or or the band in general. I don't know. I mean, like, whatever. These are killer, accessible pop rock songs. So cool. Um, delivered in very powerful ways. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit the bell icon for notifications and leave comments. And, you know, Creedlians, you guys rock. Have a wonderful musical day.